Hi there, this is Stephanie from Synergy 17 and I wanted to show you how to install the um, fonts into Oobling and also how to use the S17 Rhinestone fonts. So um, I, I'm i assuming that you've already gone, downloaded the font from the link um, and installed it into your Windows fonts folder, which you do in Windows 7 just by um, double clicking on the TTF font and clicking the install button. So it's installed on the system. Now we're going to install it into Oobling. So you go to File and then Install and then down to Fonts. I have it set to the um, Windows Fonts folder, but you can also just set it to your C drive so that you can um, you can have it check your whole system. But that takes a little bit longer for it to search your whole computer. And if you have fonts and other programs, it will find all of them and use those as well. So for now, we're just going to search through Windows Fonts, which I have plenty of those in there. So I'm going to hit install all and it will install all of the fonts that I have in my Windows fonts folder. Okay, close. And then I'm going to go to my text tools and text compose and then click on my screen. Now I was just using this font so um, it's already set at 2.5 inches tall. Um, you can either leave it wherever it is and size it later or you can um, if you already know the size of the font, you can size it. And actually, that's a little bit bigger than what it's going to be uh, when it needs to be, but I'll show you that when I get to it. So let's go down to the S17 font and find May 12. And I'm going to make um, a little bit, not just one word, I'm going to do two so that I can, it might seem tedious, but I want to show you um, step by step how I would do each letter as I kern them and tweak them because with a, a script font, um, it takes a lot more um, um, moving of each letter and um, kind of tweaking each letter so that it will fit. And I'll show you what I mean right now. So I'm going to type in Panther Pride. I'm going to put my show fill on by hitting Alt S just so that I can see it a little bit better. Okay, so then what I'm going to do, I can do a couple of things. First, what I'm going to do is use this text on screen kerning by going back into my text tools and then clicking this um, with the A, B. It shows basically that there's spacing between each. So you can see right here that I can either grab this and move them way far apart or I can move them closer in. Or, for example, you can see that the H and the E are much closer together than the P and the A. So if I were to really squeeze them in, it's going to make these really close that these are still far away. So what I'm going to do is zoom in with using my little scroll wheel on my mouse. I'm going to grab um, the little dot underneath that A and I'm going to move it closer in right here. So it will actually bring those in. And I can do that with each individual letter uh, like this. And for here, I'm probably just going to kind of leave it as is, and I'll show you why in just a second. But let's do the same thing with the pride. Whoops, too close. Um, uh, I'm going to grab that E. And the reason I'm grabbing the E and moving it into exactly where I want it is because if I try to grab that E, it's going to grab part of the D as well once I've broken the path. So I'm going to say that's a good spot for it. Okay, I'm going to click off of it. And then I'm going to go to my break path and that I have included that on my um, workspace shortcuts button or menu. But if you don't have that there or you don't want it there, you can go to arrange and then break path or you can just hit control J. You can see what the hotkeys are right there. So I'm going to grab it and break path from here. And that just broke apart all of the little circles so I can click on each one of them. Now I can see up here in my little um, height and width. Um, um, window that it's showing me that um, each of these circles has a diameter of 0.129 inches. Now if you have just installed Oobling and I haven't shown you how to do this yet, the way you get it, it automatically comes with 0.11 or point, it, it just two decimal places. The way you change that is you go to Options, Sign Lab Setup, and then Display Units and you change the number of decimal places. So I have changed it to three so that I can get a more accurate reading of exactly the diameter of each of these circles. Okay, so I know it's 0.129 and I actually want it, you could leave it there, but I want it to be 0.127 to be um, SS10s for use with the, the um, S17 libraries. So 0.124, I'm actually going to go up just a tiny bit. 
0.126. That's actually just fine because when I go to replace with rhinestones, it's gonna, um, it will be just fine. So here's what I'm gonna do. You can see that these are kind of weirdly overlapping and it doesn't really look like a nice smooth script. Um, it does it like this because if you have this E at the end of a word and we don't have the R, well, you want that E to be complete. But when you've got it melding into another letter, you don't really need all of these stones. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the R and move it over. See how it looks like it just kind of flows right there? Same thing with the H. I don't need it to be all the way up on top of that E like that. I can, I can actually get rid of a few of those stones. So I'm gonna do that and grab these and move them in closer. Um, I'm not sure how exactly how many I need to grab of the, yeah, I need to grab one more. So I'm just gonna move it right on top of it for now and then click on one of them and delete. And then I'm gonna click that one and just move it up a little bit. Uh, again, here with this N, I don't need all of those and I might even, oops, not that one. I might even get rid of this one right here. If you accidentally delete something you don't want to, just grab that undo button or you can hit control Z and that does undo as well and it will erase your last move. Bring those in. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the same thing with this A right here. Probably don't need all of those. But again, if it was at the end of a word, you would really want all those to be there. So now I have my word panther. You can see it looks pretty darn good, I think. Um, so then we're gonna do the exact same thing with pride. You remember why I told you I wanted to bring that E all the way in closer? It's because if it was out just a little bit too far and I tried to go up and grab it and move it, it's gonna move some of these on the D as well. Okay, so, oops, looks like it, there we go. Okay, so I am going to then get rid of some of these on the I, grab part of my D right here, D and the E and move them in. Get rid of some of those on the R, don't need all those, and move those in. Okay, now I have my word Panther Pride and I'm really happy with the way that it looks. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color um, by replacing with rhinestones. So they're gonna be rhinestone elements now. As it is right now, watch, if I were to make this bigger, I could do that. So if I wanted to make them SS16 stones, that's all you do is you just grab it, grab the whole thing and, and move, make it bigger. So now each one of these is right about an SS16. That was pretty good. Okay, so then I'm going to replace with rhinestones. Um, I have a replace with rhinestones um, button again in my, my workspace menu. If you don't have that and you haven't followed the tutorial on how to add these things, you can go to transform, rhinestone, and then replace with rhinestones. But I'm gonna go ahead and just grab it right here. Hit replace with rhinestones. Um, grab SS10, and then whatever color you like, whatever is easy to look at. Let's say I'm gonna be showing this to a customer. Um, I probably would, if, if I'm going to do clear stones, I would just grab the clear right there, hit OK, and hit replace. And then what I'm going to do is grab um, the bottom word, Alt G will group it, the top word, Alt G will group it, and then I'm going to draw a black box around it. Um, you may be wondering why it just still looks like a black box and it covered up all the letters. That's because the box is on top of it. We want to put it to the back. I have included a two back um, shortcut on my workspace bar. If you don't have it, you can just hit control B for back and that will put it to the back. But I'm going to go ahead and hit that. And then since I have this grouped, I'm going to just group just the two words and I'm going to hit my, just hit the, the letter C and that lines them up so they're all aligned on top of each other. I'm gonna group that whole thing together and grab the whole thing here and hit E and C, and that's gonna align the box with the words. So there you have it. That's also my weed box, so if I wanted to do this, now if I were if I were cutting this myself, I would probably actually make two weed boxes. I would make one here. So that's what I would use to export as an image, I mean right here. Um, I would export image right there to show my customer what it's going to look like to see if they like the font. When I go to cut it, I'm going to do two weed boxes. And I want them to be identical because I want them to be able to line up right on top of each other. Um, 
Let me grab both of them and I'm going to hit the C button. Now because this is, I'm going to use my arrow key to go down. Okay. So now I have both of them. Let's go back up here. Oh, you know what happened? I have Panther and Pride still grouped. So let's do this. Alt G is going to ungroup those, but that word is still grouped together. Okay. So now I have that all situated. Bring that back up on top of it. And then I can send that to my cutter over here. Um, and that is how you use the S17 fonts, um, script fonts anyway. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let us know. And I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks so much for watching.